Hey, welcome. Well, thanks, Amanda and team, for uh, hooking this up, this global denim hang. And yeah, well, you guys, you invited me to talk about my work, my artwork, my repair works. And um, yeah, well, in uh, an hour, that will probably fly by uh, as if it were seconds. And uh, it's always with the case like this. I remember I doing a podcast with, uh, with Ben a couple of years ago, and we talked for two hours and felt like 10 minutes. So just gonna... Um, show you my work, show you some of the repairs I've done, uh, the tools I use, the process I, um, every jeans and every client goes through and I'll show you the tools and maybe do some repair work to show you the tricks and so you can do it yourself because it's uh, of course very interesting to uh, repair your own, uh, your own apparel, your own favorite clothing. So um, yeah, I'm just going to start with, with my story because it actually started out with my favorite jeans breaking. I wasn't into repair uh, work like this at all five, six years ago. Then at some point I had these jeans. These were fairly uh, undamaged at the point. <laughs> at that point. I had them for six months and they ripped at the knee. You can see it uh, real quick. This was actually my, old, my very first repair. Um, it, it ripped and I was like, yeah, I can't go back to the store because yeah, that's, that's, that's silly. Your knee breaks and you just have been on your knee too much. Uh, but I didn't want to buy a new one either because, yeah, they're supposed to last a lot longer than half a year. So what I did, I uh, started searching on the Internet. So how to simply reinforce your fabric the most basic way. So then I, I found actually the 400 year old technique I've been using ever since. Uh, shashiko it's uh, actually translated as little stab so little stitch small stitch and it's the most simple stitch in embroidery uh, ever since they invented needle and thread so what you do is you just go in and out through the fabric through the original and through the added fabric as well uh, and what it creates it creates a, a very thick reinforced piece of fabric with new threads um, well 400 years ago they had all the, the the necessity to do this like this now right now we have machines and we make it ourselves very easy and not always always very uh, thoughtful and well pretty or uh, aesthetically pleasing so um, what you can do with this technique is because you have to do it very slowly you have to do stitch by stitch and if you concentrate and you take it really slow you can make really nice patterns so what it does um, it reinforces fabric, that's the point, but it also makes a, quite a nice piece of uh, clothing because you can see the wear, the tear, um, the passion and the attention the, the user gives it because uh, they, they love their piece so much. The inside is actually just as nice, well, a little bit more chaotic, but as nice as the outside. So that's quite, quite cool. Um, so I've, I was doing that on my own jeans and I was very uh, happy doing this because it's, it's very um, almost meditative piece of repair. It's, it's like a very slow, slow stitch. So you have to really concentrate. And this, this was five, six years ago. These were my very first repairs. So you can see also the development. If you, uh, if I can show you a newer piece where I make um, well, much, tighter patterns than I did before. So you see, this is uh, somewhat uh, four or five years of stitching experience and difference. Um, so, that, but I was walking around with that and, and it was actually, it's, it's very remarkable because you can, um, it's visible, it's visible mending. So you can see when someone walks up to you, hey, what's that on your knee? What, what's that, what's going on there on your jeans? And it's, there's no production company that can make, you can only replicate this with a machine, but it's not as um, sturdy, not as uh, high quality in repair terms. Uh, so it's, you can either wear it as an aesthetic or what I do is really reinforce the fabric and it's really uh, strengthens it and gives it a longer life. So I was working around with this and a friend of mine said, hey, what, what's that on your knee? Yeah, I said, well, yeah, where can you buy it? You, you can't, you have to make it. Oh, how does it work? So I explained to him, I said, yeah. Can you make it for me? So that's where it all started. So now I have somewhat of well, a lot of followers on Instagram. Um, the Instagram actually started because I was working on jeans for friends and they all were sent out because I, uh, and then at the point I had no reference material except my own jeans. So this is when I started Instagram, uh, I think five years ago. Um, 
it was online. It was just for me to create a, an archive of the stuff I've been making and to inspire people to repair their jeans and not only uh, buy a new one every year or every two years and throw the old one out. Because the old one can actually be your most favorite jeans. I think we all can agree that we have some uh, favorite jeans in our closet somewhere, uh, which is unwearable because it's ripped and it doesn't look good. And maybe your your mom or your girlfriend or your, your boyfriend or yourself, think, yeah, I can't go out in the streets looking like this because my knee is hanging out and my crotch has been ripped and my, my, my pockets don't work anymore. I have to really invest in these jeans to make it work again. And now oh, let's not bother, I never wear it again. But when you go to search for new jeans in the store, um, you will always remember that most favorite jeans because you will be looking for the, the comfort of that one. And there are a lot of, uh, in, in, my, um, yeah, in the denim world, there are a lot of hardcore denim fans that are only about raw denim and it has to be like cardboard and you have to wear it in and that's where the, where the pain starts and you have to overcome that year or two years where it's, uh, when it starts feeling comfortable and then start a new one and a new one and a new one. But actually I much uh, more prefer people who stick to one jeans or a couple and do it for almost a decade. I have some examples here I'll show you. Well, this is, this is, so this is mine. This is the Kings of Indigo. Uh, we've uh, heard Tony talk, uh, uh, I think, uh, two hours ago. Well, thanks, Tony, again, for inspiring me with uh, the work I do now. So, let's put this here. Another one uh, is a, a client from the US. This is a um, uh, really special, special pair. You can see this, um, I think it's a pure, pure blue Japan, um, or Japan blue. This has been, I think it's almost 11 years old, and this has been worn until the thread. So this is actually all kind of repairs you see here. All the small bits, they're really contrasting stitching. You can see these, these ribs being repaired, and you can see it. And you've got all the tiny stitches on the side to reinforce. There's fabric behind it, so it doesn't rip, so it doesn't go through. And there's all kind of special areas. So the knee uh, was ripped. I put some fabric behind it, folded the edges, and made a, a totally reinforced knee, so it doesn't rip. Because this is now the strongest point, but it, the next time it will, when you keep wearing it, it will probably rip right here. So then you keep extending all the repair work. So the back is really interesting on this one because <clears throat> this has been worn so many times and uh, such a long time, but the fabric was really thick. So when it wears, the rest, um, it has the heavy wear spots like uh, on the bottom and in the crotch and in the knees, and of course the pocket areas, but on the back, it's really um, been torn. So I started stitching on this, just started repairing on this. And when you see the inside, this is really, uh, let me turn it inside out. here all the different repairs over time and I always leave the in the inside I leave the the fabric just unhemmed just I just cut it repair it and leave this so this will stay soft because a lot of times you have the darning machine and uh, bad tailors will even use spray glue to spray this on and then um, it will just become like a hard piece of butt area crutch area it's, it's really terrible um, so we don't want that. So that's why I just leave this and the threads will, they will go off a bit, but yeah, it will all stay soft. So it's, you can, you don't feel it really. Um, this repair, this jeans has been back now for the third or fourth time in the past couple of, well, I've been repairing it since 2017. And it's been back in 19 and now this year again. Uh, Jay from New York is, uh, well, I always put these patches. You may might have been seeing these before on all my, uh, my jeans. Um, this is actually a label I made because it's, it's and I, this stands for, um, this is Japanese and also Chinese. Uh, Takahiro means great value because I think with the repairs we make together, the user and me, um, we add great value to your jeans. Uh, which is not replaceable uh, or machine-makeable uh, uh, or even trendy at all at some point. 
and I always number the pieces. So this one was an early one. It was number nine, 90 when I started in, uh, on this one in uh, three years ago. Um, right now, I think I'm heading for the 200, maybe even over the 200 individual repairs. I only, um, in the beginning, I only tagged like the big repairs, like the big jobs like this with a couple of knee patches really visible. Uh, some clients also sent their shirt or their jacket to me just for a small repair on the, uh, somewhere in the, in the, wherever it may, may have been broken. Um, in the beginning, I didn't didn't number those because some clients are not they don't want this patch visible or even invisible invisible on their jeans. But um, yeah, since my my brand actually, which is, it's supposed to be now, uh, grew, it's actually become a trademark for uh, my artwork. So that's really a big compliment uh, because I get more and more questions of people. Yeah, can you please put the patch in there? Can you number it with a seal tag? Because that's also a visible thing I use now. These tags are also individually numbered. You can see it right here. They are individually uh, numbered uh, and they, um, of course, they uh, match the number on the inside. So you can actually see that it's been made by uh, by my hands. Um, oh, I work alone. I do everything by myself with my two hands. So it's, um, it's really a meditative uh, work of, um, repairing you can only do it well when you're really concentrated when you really are fully focused on the on the repairs because then is the only way to create really nice patterns like these well, just it real quick i'll show you this one this is again this is the the japanese jeans uh, jay from new york has been wearing for years uh, first, uh, I did this knee. There was a there was a, a couple of big ribs here and underneath here. I put a, a patch underneath uh, or on, on top and a, a raw patch matching those, and the pattern goes all the way down. So actually, what you do when you repair this, you start by um, taking a piece of um, old denim. I mostly use old scraps, of old jeans. So you see here in the back for the Instagrammers as well. You see here in the back, you see all kinds of different blues, all old jeans I use to repair, um, I repair people's jeans. So I, I have some raw denim as well. It's for color matching. Uh, for instance, it looks really good if you have some different tones of denim on, the, on your jeans. Uh, so it gives it really a contrast and it's nice for, um, for, yeah, for visual effect. Uh, so it becomes more interesting than just putting all the same blues on it. Um, so what I do is I actually cut this piece uh, to size. I fold the edges all around. Well, of, of course, I take the, the, the hem, I take it, take it off and make it all straight. So then I fold the edges and I pin it with some simple needles. So small, simple, small needles. I pin it fixed to the uh, over the spot. It's important uh, because uh, jeans is so of course when you have it like that it's flat but if you wear it it is not flat so if you make a patch on your jeans make sure it has enough room for your legs to be uh, to move in to, um, yeah, to to bend and to so it's always it's well, we see it right here if you have it like this it is slightly round it's because there's the knee here. It will eventually, if you make it, it will stretch with the jeans, but I tend to um, make it as comfortable as possible from point zero after the repair. So you actually have the same comfort as you had before. Of course, but now with a mended piece. So um, then I start stitching. I start stitching from one point. So I take the middle line, most of the time I take the line in the middle and just go, for all these stitches one by one. And then when I finish the line, when I'm all, all the way up to here, I return and I go back. The first line is the most important because you want that to be straight. Because it's most of the times I've been, I've, I will do that um, over and over just to, because it's slightly crooked. And you take your left step back and take a look and say, okay, is this really aligned with the thing? Is it when you put it on the floor or you make it slightly round, is it still in the middle? Well, that's the main point you start with and based on that line you follow 
those and you follow those on that side. So go up and down and up and down and up and down. And that on this will take you five, six hours. One line is just really, because you go to, through uh, double layers of denim. On the sides, even triple or quadruple layers of denim because it's folded and on the corners it's folded double because you have this seam and that seam, so it goes double. <coughs> so um, when you're up, when you have all these vertical lines done and it's all fixed and all the needles are out, you can start by doing the horizontals and the process will go on and go on and go on and go on and go on. So this will be really, um, you have to keep your mind at the piece. You, have to, you don't watch TV or, you know, you do it, um, I don't know, um, in the garden when the kids are playing. You have to really focus on this, mending this piece alone. Um, when you're finished, um, I just tie a knot on the back. It's just uh, the last stitch goes to the back. I tie a knot and I leave it soft. And then you have it fixed and it's repaired. Um, that's an outside patch. Of course, we have other repairs. We have pieces like this. This is uh, a simple, small hole. Um, just uh, put some nice fabric behind it, pin it around. You don't have to fold it when it's in the inside. Just pin it around, fold the edges of the, of the, of the hole, fold it in, and then start stitching around. I always first do this, and then do the decorations or reinforcements around it. And this, uh, for me, I don't really know uh, what I'm gonna do when I start with it, I just see where I, where I go when I see the repair, I'll say, okay, let's, let's look at the whole piece. What's, what is good here? Um, what looks good? Uh, what's um, actually reinforced? What's, what's the technique? Which is the best way to, um, to mend it, to fix it? And then uh, I, just, I will end up with a pattern like this or with cross stitches. These are actually really nice um, when they fade. Because this is this is raw. This has been unworn. I just uh, Jay hasn't even seen it himself. Um, um, this will wear, and because the the fabric is thick and soft, the stitches are really tight. It will create a nice uh, depth of blue, light blue, dark blue, as you see on the used piece right here. You see the deep areas stay blue, and the, the areas more out they will wear quicker. So you get a really nice contrast. Um, the crotch area is always where most jeans um, break the, well, the, the, the soonest, the, the first. Let me see where I have one. You can do that in, this is one of my own. It's a bit uh, paint splattered, but uh, right here I've done it uh, on the outside. So I've made uh, patches on the outside because this is a very um, outgoing pair of jeans with all kinds of paint on it and repairs. You can see here are some, this is actually Japanese fabric. This is a raw denim. I use some color on this one, colored thread. Um, because just it, it matches the colorfulness of the jeans. Uh, and on the inside, I have some reinforced fabrics from earlier. You can see here on the crotch area, it's cut to match. So it doesn't, uh, well, here you don't need any fabric because you need access. Um, and it's very simple stitch for the beginning. And after that, I put the patches on the outside on it. On the back area, it's the same thing. It's an old piece of fabric. And you can see here really, there was a hole here before there were holes here. So it will develop and develop. And the threads, you see actually the back side of the threads, you see these reinforce the fabric because you put a, you can't do it without a back fabric or something on the outside. Um, but this is really how you reinforce the fabric. So it's just adding simple lines, like weaving a fabric, but then without uh, doing it on that tiny scale, it's slightly bigger. But this is, of course, this is as well a piece that faded really nicely. You can see here, this was once raw and it's now fading. The threads are cotton, so you can wash them. I only use cotton threads. Um, I have these pieces, this thin thread. I also have natural dyed 
and fabrics. They are slightly more delicate, but they come in really nice colors. Also, for some other repairs, I use these greenish colors. Sometimes you even use a regular embroidery thread. That's good to start with. You can get it at your local um, at your local uh, sewing store. Every town has one. These are actually made in France. Um, these come in a variety of colors. You can already use these as well. Uh, but I mainly uh, use this simple thread, uh, cotton thickness. Uh, I don't know how they measure this, but it's um, it's much thicker than machine work, uh, and it matches the the dimensions of the jeans. Uh, sometimes even color, more color, light blue, green for black jeans. Requested also some black. It's all pure cotton, uh, but I prefer this undyed cotton thread. <coughs> So special projects um, um, always match special people for me. So the people who um, bring me their jeans, they're obviously very passionate about their, their, about their product, about their favorite jeans. You see one in the back. This is from Jeff. He's also, uh, hi Jeffy. I see him on Instagram. He's uh, asking now what my favorite jeans is. Well, my favorite jeans is actually on the stack right there. I have two at the moment. Uh, but I'll get into that in a moment. Um, people who care so much about their genes are, uh, yeah, they have uh, an equal mindset as me, as I have. Um, because I have the same passion, I like repairing stuff instead of replacing it. Uh, and it's really to uh, get in touch with those people. They, are, they Normally they, they uh, well, people on the Instagram, on uh, live, on Zoom, um, I'm just a one-man company. Most of you uh, address me as, hey, you guys, or hey, big company, but I'm just one guy. This is actually my house. This is my studio. I work from home because that's where I feel uh, most comfortable and uh, I make the best art because I'm relaxed here and just thinking uh, about the best way to fix this or to enhance it for the future. Not a big company, no money goal, no big uh, ambitions uh, to go to Hollywood or wherever or uh, open stores. I just like repairing people's favorite jeans. And the best thing about repairing people's favorite jeans are the people themselves, are the guys who keep wearing this for, well, this is actually from 2012, so it's been going on for eight years. It's a Dutch brand, Denim. Most of you probably know it. Uh, designed by Jason. This is one of his early models with a very nice detail in the jeans. Um, this guy is, is an artist, he's a designer, he makes uh, really nice uh, products. It's uh, Joshua from Amsterdam, Studio Joshua. Please uh, all uh, give him a thumbs up on Insta. Uh, he makes really nice stuff, but he's wear these, he will wear these um, creating his art. And while he creates the pieces he really likes to make, his jeans become art as well. He came to me uh, to repair his jeans, I think this was in 2016. Um, We've been going at it. He's been keeping wearing this. It's really thin. You can actually almost look through it. At some, uh, at some points, I can show you a little bit better. Like this. So there's all kinds of patches on this. It's a really nice uh, structure, but it's it's well, it's going now. It's going really fast. The holes just fall in them if you wear them one day or more. Um, I will actually keep repairing this until he stops wearing it. So that's an endless cycle. It will eventually go up on a wall somewhere, like Jeff's jeans here. This is another Dutch brand, G-Star. This is from my good friend, uh, Jeff. Um, the Dutch guy, he's been wearing this as well. I think, I don't know, Jeff, how long have you been wearing this? Six years, seven years? Um, it's become really interesting after repair, after repair, after repair. With this one, I also did the cuffs because it's always uh, when you flip your cuff and you wear it, it will fade on the bottom and eventually it will break. Um, I repaired this as well. I will unfold it now. You can see because I, it's inverted. You can see I did the patch here. And when you flip it, it looks really good on the outside and it matches the pattern on the rest of the jeans. Like this. So this one, <coughs> really cool, really cool piece. And some crosses here, I put some extra fabric inside 
and just outlined it so the pocket will go along a lot longer and this makes a repair where its wallet will come around. This hem was almost gone, so I did a change stitch on, on that area and reinforced it with some stitches and of course the fabric on the back. Uh, a lot of points where, five years, thanks Jeff, uh, five years this has been going on, so it's, uh, it's rather quick uh, evolve, evolved. A lot of points as well is the edges of the pocket. Of course the inside of the pocket, but you can have that replaced easily by, uh, for instance, uh, Dutch denim repair. Edwin from Rotterdam area, he makes really good machine work. He, always, he also replaces your um, um, uh, buttons, things, what you call them, I can't find the word. Um, this, I always also repair a lot. This is a piece of uh, salvage. Just flip it around and stitch it, stitch it around the corner. And then it will become an extra layer of reinforced so you can use your pocket actually more and a lot longer. He uh, really wanted the logo on the outside, number 95. So this is uh, 2016, yeah, 16. Uh, because it takes a long time to repair, it's obviously uh, also a long time in my um, in my studio, in my home. Some jeans uh, will be here for a couple of weeks, some even for months. Jay's jeans, I've been working on those uh, because it's a big job, especially the back. We're working on them for a couple of weeks uh, over a couple of months. So he hasn't seen, probably hasn't seen his jeans for half a year now. So I can imagine he's very uh, eager to get them back. So, but my favorite jeans are actually in development as well. I have two pairs, which I wear, uh, well, and the one I'm wearing now is Momotaro, it's a rather new one. Uh, this one is an old AD suit. This is my absolute favorite jeans. I'm really careful wearing these. These are from, I think, 2001. Um, can't find them anywhere. I found them in a stock of donated jeans. It was just my size, it was brand new. So thanks for the one who donated me this uh, these jeans. And my favorite one right now is this Montaro. I've been wearing this for a year and it's been going quite fast. And this is actually the jeans I prototype stuff on. So a friend of mine from Belgium, also an early customer from a couple of years ago, he requested a crotch repair on the outside with fabric from his grandfather's Congo Belgian uniform. Zoom is saying something. Love it. Thanks. I don't know what it's saying, but uh, uh, so this fabric he really wanted stitched outside on the crotch area. So this is where I prototype the crotch fix like this. So this is actually an early version and final version I did on his jeans with his grandfather's um, fabric. So that's really nice. Right now I'm testing some stuff with uh, this. This is actually very interesting. It looks plastic. Looks like plastic, but it's actually leather. I got it from a, from a friend, Joshua from Amsterdam, the artist. He's been working with this material for upholstery for uh, design projects, and it's actually very cool stuff. This is leather. It's uh, it's transparent. It's very very nice and very nice of a color. So it, I've just been prototyping it on my own jeans. See how it wears. See what it uh, what it will evolve into, and see if it's comfortable enough for other repairs and it also comes in other bright colors also leather this is really really cool so these are my favorite things my other favorite things are actually my tools i will now flip the zoom a bit so you can see the tools instagram as well uh, these are my Tools. This is actually all I need when I repair jeans. This is what I take everywhere. Of course, some, some fabrics, some fabric slabs like this, but everything is on here. I made this myself. It is uh, with blue leather inside. It's raw denim and it actually has everything I need to make any repair I, uh, I always do. So you see here, I have some big scissors, tools, German scissors. I can cut up to I think eight or nine layers of denim. Um, so just, just for cutting the big pieces, smaller pieces, I have this little Japanese pair of scissors, really nice. Got these from uh, Jaap in Amsterdam. He's a knife and a scissors specialist. 
I got some uh, fabric scraps here, old scraps, of course, little logos, I stitch on them and number them afterwards also by hand. This is the most important thing, of course, the cotton thread with the needle. Um, finger protection, I always use this little leather thimble uh, to push the needle through. I will in a minute uh, do a small repair so you can see. This is actually, I wear these out a lot because it's like second skin on your thumb, otherwise you will go through your fingers very fast. Um, well, some uh, thread cutters, pencils, measuring tape, uh, bits and pieces, buttons, and all other spare needles. Um, next in line is the tag. These are the unclipped versions of the numbered seals. These are actually, um, these are from, um, from the shipping industry. They are used and number two uh, to secure other uh, units. And right here, I have some I have a bigger thing of thread. So this is actually all I use to repair. So needle thing, uh, threads, small scissors. Uh, every client that comes in, I make a little sketch of his jeans, his or her jeans. This is actually uh, Ruert from Canada. I made a sketch for his jeans, looks like this. This is just uh, actually a copy of a picture he sent me. You can see here the repairs. Uh, I number them. I uh, estimate the size so to get a rough quote going because it's of course important that you know what you start with. Um, this is an, one another client. I don't know where from, but this is actually a plan for repair. So you see here, I numbered uh, first. I did some. Uh, numbers for the repairs you can see them underneath the, the terrace and then i actually sketch over what i'm planning to do and how to repair it it's very important to give your customer of course an, uh, an, a little bit of expectance a lot of you uh, just say okay you can just go ahead and do your magic on my jeans but i always try to give them a little bit of a preview of what it will look will maybe probably look like in uh, after i'm done with it just to give their a little bit of expectations. Uh, after this, it's just a matter of stitching. Uh, mostly I have it memory, memorized. Uh, memorized, um, well, just because I already know what I'm gonna do, this is just for the client. Uh, so I just go about it and it will evolve. Every jeans I make, I, I'm busy with is up on my wall. It is there all day and all week. And there's multiple ones on the wall if there's more projects and there always is. So. And that's actually where I can view all day if I'm still confident about the, the jeans and the repair I've made. Uh, if there's something which I'm not quite uh, happy with, it will also go out the same, the same uh, speed it, go, it goes in. I can take it out and do it again. I've done that also lots of, lots of times. <laughs> um, I will now try and see if I can do a small repair for you. Um, so this is the Joshua denims again. So you see all the wires and tears and there's a lot of small holes like right here. This is a bit of a complicated area because it's near the crotch and the zipper. But I can probably show you more simple hole here, like for instance this one. These the fabric is so thin when you bend and you work on these jeans, you work in these jeans doing something, you go right through it. So for this, I would like to uh, make an inside repair because it matches the most uh, repairs I've already done, and the contrast pieces are more strategically placed to keep it, uh, keep it in balance. Well, when you go to the inside of the jeans, this one has really been repaired over a hundred times, I think as well, by my friend Clinton, who uses uh, a darning machine to repair jeans. He's been doing so for years, and this jeans has already also passed his atelier for many times. Uh, so these holes right here, for instance, 
this little piece, this little one. See the selvage is all, all gone here. For this, I would use a small piece of fabric. So let's say this little piece. Just to see if I can get an efficient use of, of this little piece. So it's just you have to really see which direction the weave goes. You know, you have the uh, left hand uh, and the right hand twill. Um, I like to always match it with the jeans, with the fabric that's uh, inside. If you put it the other way around, you can do it, but it's it's better. I like it better if it's all detailed and it's all the same direction. So I'm making a really small, tiny patch right here. I'm gonna just stitch that on here. Um, let's flip the call a bit to get better access. And then it's a matter of pinning it down. So I said I just use regular small pins. Pin it down here. Give it a little bit of space. So, like this. And then what you actually do is flip it the other way around because my work is visually most interesting on the outside. I want it to look at best on the outside. So now you see here, you see here the little hole we're talking about. Next up, I'm gonna do this one and then so on so on but this one is first now so you see here the two needles and you can feel here the fabric swatch behind it for instagram as well uh, the two needles and the fabric patches right behind here so draw the tools a bit like a clean workspace and then thread the needle make a small knot on the end so it stays on the first stitch. And then let's see where it is. And then let's see if you can, can you see this? Yes, I want to see. We can just start by circling, making a nice circle around the hole. And I always try uh, everything freehand. So <clears throat> when I make a circle, it's <clears throat> most of the time it's not perfect. But for me, it's uh, the mission is to get it perfect. But the result is, if it's perfect, it doesn't look handmade uh, because yeah, well, we humans are not actually very good at making circles uh, perfectly in one go. So that's where you see it's human made and it's not just aesthetically uh, designed on a laser slash embroidery machine. Um, I have to see. I'm trying to talk now while stitching, and that's even for me a bit inconvenient because I never ever do that. So most of the time I am doing this in peace and quiet with some music on. I don't know if you can see it very clearly how I do this, but it's really going inside and flipping it right out and then pulling the thread through. And you can see here. Uh, you can see it really good. The circle is now starting to come. But because this jeans has been worn so many times uh, and the fabric is really light, you don't see the contrast of the stitch work I do. But on a newer or more dark jeans, uh, you can see it's uh, a lot better. And if you see it a lot better, you have to do it a lot better visually as well. Um, see, While I'm stitching, I come across the needles I used to, to pin um, the fabric. And when I'm passing them, I take them out one by one. So you replace actually the, the, the pins by stitches. So, and then after all the stitches are out, it's more comfortable, of course, to stitch because you then can just uh, 
go at it without poking your fingers with three extra needles. So, and then when you have the first circle done, like this, you see here emerging. Well, it's definitely not circle, definitely not round, but that's because I'm talking while stitching, so it's not fairly well zoom. You see here the stitches go around. Um, remember always in the middle of the process it might not look good as well as with the with the cross stitches when you when you start you see the stitches coming and you say oh my god what's this, this is not going to look like anything but you have to trust the process but in the end it will when you're halfway or past the uh, the first half of your stitches it will actually become uh, quite nice and so, so sometimes you don't have to be scared that this is not a perfect circle you just work with what you have and see what we can do to make it more interesting so i'm going to put another circle around it <clears throat> so you're going through two layers of fabric and then this particular jeans, a lot of uh, darning and old repairs. So, like this, the last touch I always do to the inside, flip it inside out, and then just put a quick knot, snip it. I have these really, really nice Japanese thread colors. Oh, they are really sharp. And these are really easy to get inside and you can really pick them up quickly because a pair of scissors you always have to get your hands on in it and this is just really snappy and quick so i really love this piece i've been also using that uh, maybe i have, have to have to sharpen my uh, yap sometime soon but um, it's really sharp already so then you can see that we made our first repair let me find it real quick here so you see the stitches here, it's not a perfect circle, so I'll probably take it out and do it again after we're <laughs> done uh, with, the, with this thing, because I can't talk and do this properly at the same time. So this, this is actually how we work, uh, or how I work, and how you should also try it and uh, repair these jeans. Um, the mission is repair, don't replace, which I always tag on everything and I shout to everyone. <clears throat> because it also uh, it's also actually um, a mission against fast fashion and replacing and throwing away everything you don't like anymore. Um, it's just because it's available and it's cheap, it doesn't mean you have to buy it, use it and throw it away. You just have to think a little bit better about your choices, what you wear, what you buy, um, what quality is it, who made it, and how can you enjoy it for a longer time than just a season where it's trendy or um, of course you have temperature issues, you have uh, weather, weather conditions, uh, that's where clothing is for. So you have to really think, uh, will I use uh, thick jeans for the winter or will I buy a nice dark blue denim for summer? Really think about your purchase um, and enjoy it and uh, maintain it a long time. So keep it alive as I can do it with uh, stitching like this. You can also do it yourself, of course. So we have uh, not five more minutes. So I would say just uh, when you s um, have questions, drop them in the Instagram live or right here, unmute yourself and just ask away if you'd like to see more details. Hello. Hi. Hey, hi. Uh, so I had this question. So I do some Sasiko. Yeah. I was trying some samples. But the issue is how do you trace your pattern? Do you do freehand or you trace it with no, I do everything freehand. In the beginning I did do uh, I traced it, so I did some chalk. 
uh, as uh -huh. a and then just the, replicate the pattern. But uh, as I repaired more and more jeans, you get more and more handy with it. So now I do everything like this. It's all freehand. I now have the, the feeling and the, the experience to see, okay, this is the biggest patch. So this will, if I start here with a small one, it will be a rhythm and it will be uh, even on the end. So this is, yeah. right now I'm at the point I can do it just freehand, but in the beginning I definitely traced it. Uh, I even did it once so um, uh, perfect that it was, uh, yeah, it looked like machine work. It was not very pretty. The spaces were all five millimeters outside of each other and all replicated uh, well near, near to perfection. And then I was really unhappy with the end result because because these, this stitch is slightly different than that one, slightly different than that one. This is actually where you see it's man-made. So this is where the passion shows that someone has really put time and effort in it. You can also do this and replicate this by a laser or weaving machine or an embroidery machine, but then it yeah. loses all the passion. It loses all Ooh. effectiveness. Uh, this spot is really tricky because it's on the side of the pocket. So you have here, you have the back pocket. This is next to the back pocket. This is on the seam. And this is actually on the inside of the pocket because you want it to be wearable still. So this is a very tricky spot for this type of repair. This is unable to be um, made with a machine on this spot. It can only be replicated and maybe uh, sewed on by hand after it's mounted. So no, um, absolutely no tracing anymore for me, but it's just experience. Thank you. Um, I get a question from Garment Amsterdam. Is it recommended not to wash your jeans often, especially when they're repaired? No, actually not. That's, uh, I think that's, you know, actually it's natural dyed. All this stuff is natural dyed indigo on cotton. So it will, when you wash it, the color will decrease. So the color will go lighter and lighter and lighter. So you lose the amount of dye in the jeans. Um, that's not, that's not very, uh, that's, not, that's not bad, but uh, jeans might start out like this and end up after five, six washes like this. That's evolution of denim, evolution of the fabric. Uh, my fabric is actually uh, all used denim. So it's all natural dyed indigo. It's all um, cotton stitched uh, thread. So you can actually wash this whenever you like, as many times as you like. I have two young young kids. You can see um, on the picture us are there. Uh, they are five and six, and I've re they are my best clients, of course. They they don't pay well, but uh, they tear their jeans so many times, and they wash. I wash their jeans every day because it's always full of sand and grass and and, and guck. Uh, I don't know what. And these are actually washed over a hundred times, and they are still really uh, sturdy and uh, well working very well. So, um, no, to answer your question, you can wash them as many times as you like. Um, another question from Instagram. Do you show the end of the holes for them to stop? So the end of the holes and stop running on the patch or they stop getting bigger? Uh, I actually, um, the holes, I stop them. Yeah, this is actually a piece. This is one to be repaired. Uh, there's two ways. You can either do it like on Jake's jeans. So that's this one. You can actually fold the edges of the tear inside. So you flip it to the inside and then you loop around it. So you make sure it doesn't, uh, it doesn't go bigger than this. Or you can do it like this. It's just a matter of style and preference. This is actually just the hole as it was. Put a fabric patch around it that's, well, I think, like this big. And you make sure you stitch further than the cut, of course. Um, so this is uh, an easy way to uh, fix it and to make it stop uh, going, but it's really aesthetically. So you can either do it more uh, tight or more rough. Uh, totally up to you. Um, I only use denim patches or which other material fabrics would you use? I don't only use uh, denim, I also use natural cotton. I have many, many uh, fabrics here. I show you, I have all kinds of uh, fabric scraps. I have these kind of pieces. I have Indonesian fabrics, I have Japanese bodo fabrics. 
I have old stained towels, also all cotton. This is uh, these really nice pieces, natural dyed. Other stuff, rougher pieces. I have old Japanese cloth, but you can almost see through, so thin as this. Uh, so now I can use, and I'm now experimenting more with leather and uh, camouflage, old, um, old army stuff. So that's also really nice to do. Uh, hey, Philippe, nice of you to join on Instagram. Um, well, this is also an interesting piece. This has been one of the first repairs on these jeans. You can see it's really been in the beginning, uh, but it's been evolving and evolving. It's been, there's no thread left here. There's no fabric, real denim fabric left again. So Zoom, thanks for watching. Um, Amanda, Ben, team, Clopper Clam, hard word to pronounce. Uh, thanks for having me on your, um, on your Zoom meeting. Instagram live, all people, thanks for watching. And uh, hopefully I can do this again sometime. Thank you and enjoy the next show.